Hey church, hope you're doing well. Hope you're weathering the storm well. Hope you're safe. Hope you're with friends and family and loved ones. Um, I know we're not currently here and we're not meeting together corporately like we normally do, but that doesn't mean that we can't praise and we can't worship our God together in our own homes. So I want to encourage you to grab your friends, grab your family, grab your loved ones, whoever it is that you're uh, dealing the storm with, and uh, bring them around. Bring them around in a circle. Let's get in front of our computers, our laptops, our phones, wherever it is that you're watching this. And let's just lift up a praise to God. It's in circumstances like these that, and in these storms, that sometimes when we worship, it's when, it's when God really, really moves. It's times like these that it's the hardest, I guess, to worship, but it's also the most beneficial. So let's get together and let's lift a praise and a worship to God. Amen. When the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There is another in the fire Standing next to me is another in the waters holding back the seas should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free there is a cross that bears the burden where another died for me there is another in dead left the dead beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore and when I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning either way I will bow to the things of this world and I know and I know Joy from every battle. 
Cause I know that's where you'll be I'll count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I'll count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I'll count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Like the name of Jesus, the earth will shake, the earth will shake and tremble before Him. Chains will break as heaven and earth sing. Holy is the name. Holy. Hey church, we hope you're doing well. We're so thankful that you joined us today uh, for our online church. And I'm praying that you're safe. I'm praying that you've taken all the precautions necessary uh, to be safe at home or wherever you are. And uh, we're praying for all of us across South Florida and really the state of Florida that everybody uh, took their necessary steps and that you would be safe today. Thank you for joining us uh, for this small service that we decided to bring uh, to our entire community. Uh, we love you. Me and Diana have been praying and uh, our entire teams, we're ready to help, have been helping, are ready to help for anybody in need. And so I hope that you enjoyed that time of worship. Uh, if you're already prepared, you're already settled and you gathered around the laptop or TV, uh, we got to worship a little bit together and just put our attention back on God and know that he's in absolute control. Uh, just thank you. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to ask you if you can to continue to help us. Uh, we didn't gather physically, although we're not in our physical buildings today. I love that we can gather across the internet and across 
groups and homes. I know a lot of family and friends are together, even from our own church. That's what I love about Calvary. Uh, we're not a church with groups. Uh, we're a groups church, and that's who we are. And so I heard about some people that were going to spend the storm together with friends and family across the church. And so uh, we're glad that you're there for one another. And, um, and you know, church is not a physical building. Church is uh, who we are. We are the church. And so we don't need to be gathered in a building. We can gather across an online community like this and uh, with friends and family. And we are still the church of Jesus Christ. And uh, we love you so much. We're praying for you. And uh, thank you for continuing to help. I'm going to ask you to continue to pray for us, for our entire team. Uh, we've been helping out and we'll continue to help out across South Florida. We're ready to help. Uh, we have a disaster relief fund. We have teams. We have city care that's ready to help uh, for anything that happens uh, through the storm, after the storm, to help our community uh, get well, get back, get strong. And then I'm going to ask you to help as well uh, financially. We give every single week, and though we're not gathering inside a building, you can still contribute today. If you would like to contribute, I would love that you help us to, to stay strong and you keep the church healthy. And that's why we've been able to help out throughout the years, like we did with Houston, uh, like we've done in South Florida, in Puerto Rico, and many other. It's because we have a generous church that I always give. And so we're going to put up a link, calvaryconnect.com, where you can give. Also a number where you can text to give. And that helps us be strong, be healthy, and uh, it helps us be prepared so that we can be a strong church and always be ready to be an influence and make an impact across uh, South Florida. And so, again, we're praying for you. I'm praying that you are ready for this storm. And, and uh, as the storm approaches, uh, we just wanted to bring a word of encouragement, really a breath of fresh air. Maybe today you're gathered around a laptop or a TV and you're watching this with family and friends, we love that you can have church at home. We really believe that that's something everybody should do, every family should do. We just don't, don't attend church on a Sunday, uh, but we can do this on a Monday night or on a Wednesday. We can attend church together with family and friends. I remember growing up, my dad, he would gather us on like a Tuesday night at home, and he'll bring out his Bible, and we'll all gather together, and There'll be a time where we would either worship or he'll read some verses and just ask us what we thought. And I think it's a beautiful thing. And obviously when I was little, I probably didn't enjoy it so much. But now I look back and I appreciate moments like that that we did together as a family. And so I think on a day like this uh, where we're already preparing for the storm uh, at home, getting ready or probably under the storm right now, um, it's a great moment to just gather together and have that time of worship and then just get in the Word. So whether you're already prepared, uh, getting ready for it, or under the storm, we just wanted to bring a word that would encourage you today, uh, bring peace to your soul, to your mind, to your heart. Uh, the good news, we will be gathering next week, Sunday, September 8th, across three locations. Uh, we're excited because our West Campus is launching. And so uh, wherever your campus is, meet us there Sunday, September 8th, and we'll give you updates as how we're helping and what we're going to do to help the state of Florida. And so Sunday, September 8th, Kendall Campus, City Campus, and West Campus will be on, and uh, we can't wait to see you. Maybe today, maybe today you, you're not in the direct path of the storm, um, but I think a lot of times these physical storms can remind us about spiritual storms, emotional storms, uh, mental storms that happen in life. Maybe today you're watching and you're saying, Alex, I'm, I'm not in the path of the storm. There, there is no storm outside. Maybe wherever you are, it's kind of peaceful, a little bit of rain, not, not too much trouble. But I think a lot of times uh, those storms can actually help us to remember that sometimes our heart is full of storms. Like I believe there's some people watching today. There's a storm in your soul. Like in your soul, you're troubled, your heart is troubled, your mind is troubled. Emotionally, you are just in a bad place for, for whatever it may be. Um, maybe it's a financial situation, a family situation, a, a relationship issue. You are in the middle of a storm. Have, have you been there? Like, like I've been there when life gets tough and life gets hard and all of a sudden it seems like everything on the inside is, is under attack. It seems like there's a storm. Around that thought, I wanted to share some verses out of Mark uh, chapter 9. If you're with friends and family, you can maybe open up a Bible and read it with me. Let's read a few verses. And In Mark chapter 9, there's this beautiful story about a father. 
And uh, this father, he has a storm in his heart, in his mind, in his soul, because his son has been tormented by an evil spirit. Um, if you're a father and you have kids, uh, you know that when your kids are in trouble, you will do everything you can to make sure they're well. Me and Dana, we don't have kids yet, um, but I have nephews and nieces, and I love them so much. I go crazy with my nephews and nieces. And uh, I remember one time we were taking care of Ethan, one of our little nephews, and uh, me and Dana had to take care of him just for a few hours. And I remember I, I wouldn't get my eyes off of Ethan. We were at the mall. We took him grocery shopping. And every, every moment he was with us, I just want to make sure he was okay, right? Like, I love him that much. And number two, he's not my child. I'm responsible for him. But, but it's just like, man, you, you want them to be well. And when they're not well, you see parents, when they, they themselves get in a bad place uh, because their kids are maybe up to no good, choosing a bad path in life, uh, something has happened that has affected them and has caused a storm in your soul. That's where the father's at. In Mark chapter 9, the father has a storm in his mind, in his soul. He's worried. He, he's anxious. He's stressed. I mean, he probably hasn't slept for days because of what's happened to his child. In fact, we find out that his, his son has been tormented since, chi since childbirth. And so it's been years of this father stressed. Read with me in Mark chapter 9. Let's read a few verses. Mark chapter 9, verses 14 through 23. Look at what happens. Uh, Jesus was with Peter, James, and John up at the Mount of Transfiguration. They come down from that, and this is what they encounter. Beginning of verse 14, it says, When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd gathered around them, and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus... They were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. Jesus asked this. He says, what are you arguing with them about? A man in the crowd says, teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. By the way, I think it's interesting that anytime the enemy comes into our life, one of the things he tries to do is to rob us of our speech. I think it's powerful when you vocalize and verbalize praise, when you remind your soul of how good God is. And the enemy, what he wants to do is that he wants to keep you quiet. He wants to make sure that you don't praise. He wants to make sure that you don't pray. He wants to make sure that you don't tell the world how good God is. Make sure the enemy never robs you of your speech. In verse 18, it says, whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth. He gnashes his teeth. And he becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. Jesus replies, you unbelieving generation. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. In verse 20, it says that they brought the boy to him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into convulsion. It says he fell to the ground and he rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? The father says, from childhood. It has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. And then look what the father says. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. J Jesus, if you can do anything, can you, can you help us? I love how Jesus replies in verse 23. If you can, like Jesus repeated his question, if you can, like I could just imagine Jesus, like, are you serious? If, if I can, if, and then he says, everything is possible for one who believes. Everything is possible for one who believes. I don't know, maybe you find yourself there today. I, I've been there. Life has hit me. Life has hit me and Diana. Life has been difficult and hard. Many times, many days are extremely dark and there's all kinds of attack on family, on marriage, on finances. And, and maybe that's the storm that you're in today. I don't know, maybe, maybe you just recently got out of a divorce and here you are in the middle of a storm physically, but also internally, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and you find yourself in that dark place. How did my marriage 
end up this way. I had no idea I was going to stay single at this age. And here I am by myself under this hurricane. And my kids were, were separated. Maybe it's financially. You, you're in a bad place. You couldn't even prepare for the storm. And you're reaching out because I, you are just in a bad place when it comes to finances and money. And, and you're thinking that you're never going to get out. And you're in a dark place. Maybe it's a health issue. Maybe, maybe there's a sickness in your life or in somebody's life in your family and, and you're saying when is this going to be over like this is crazy and, and it can be tormenting right like life sometimes can be tormenting things come to vex our soul and, and we end up much like this father like god if you can do anything have you ever talked to god like that like god god if you can do anything because because i'm i'm about done Right? Maybe it's an addiction. Maybe it's a bad habit and, and, and you're tired of it. And you're saying, God, if you can do anything. I've, I've talked to God that way. Right? I, think, I think we all have. When we don't get life, when we don't understand life, if you can do anything, can you, can you help us? I think humanity has that question sometimes. Can, can you help us, God? If you can do anything. And maybe you're watching today and that's where you're at. The storms that come to our soul, to our mind, to our emotions, they come to rob us of our belief. I wanna to talk to you about belief just for a few more minutes and then we'll pray. And uh, we'll pray that you stay safe through the storm and then we'll pray for our city care teams and our church to help. But, but I wanna to talk to you about belief because the enemy wants to rob you of your belief. Like I know, we, we believe in God. I'm not talking about that. I know a lot of us, we believe in God and, and we believe that Jesus is the Son of God. But, but sometimes we, we, we don't think he can really come through. We, we know he's there and Jesus died for us on the cross. We, we understand all that. But sometimes it's like he, he's not going to come through for me in this particular thing. I want to talk to you about belief because belief is powerful. And I just have three quick thoughts on belief. And then we'll pray. And I think the, the first thing that we always need to believe and we always need to be reminded of is number one, believe that God is for you. Believe that God is for you. It sounds like a simple thought. I know it sounds too simple, but I think every single day we need to remind ourselves he's, he's for me. Like I have a God who is for me. He's not against me. He's not mad at me. He hasn't left me. He hasn't forgotten me. But I have a God who is for me. He, he loves me. Like God doesn't want me to fail. I want to remind you today, wherever you are, wherever you're watching this, God doesn't want you to fail. He doesn't want you to fail. God is not hoping you fail. He's not waiting for you to fail to then say, ha, huh, I knew it. I knew you were going to fail. I knew you were going to doubt. I knew you were going to fear. I knew it. I was waiting for this moment. I knew you were going to slip up again. I knew you were going to fall into that addiction again. Oh, I, I knew that was going to happen. I knew you were going to fail. Like God is not waiting for you to fail. God, I believe, is on the edge of heaven looking down. And he's waiting for you to win. He's not just waiting for you to win. He's helping you to win. God's help is available for you today. I love that. When I think about that, I, I try to remind my soul every single day he's for me. God is for me. He's a good father and he's for me and he wants me to win. Believe that God is for you. Maybe today doubt is there. It's suffocating you, right? Maybe today the storms of life are choking you and it's choking out your belief and it's choking out your faith. I want to remind you with a fresh word from heaven today, God is for you. God is for you. He loves you. His eyes are on you. He hasn't taken his eyes off of you. He sees you right where you are. Like Diana mentioned in last week's message, like, like he's seen those tears at night. He sees you when you go to sleep and you, you're wondering where he's at. He's reminding you today, he's for you. Come on, God is for us. My, my God is for us. I can imagine this father who says, Jesus, if you can, like, can you help us? 
right? And, and he's probably thinking like, my son is tortured by this evil spirit. I, I don't even know if you want to help us. And I think Jesus' posture, his attitude, his response shows, I, I love you. I love you and I'm, I'm here to help. When you're in the fire, I'm here to help. His name is Jesus and it's the name that is above every single name and he's there for help. Today, can, can you remind your soul, God is for me. He's for me. I may, be, I may be in a storm, but he's for me and he wants to help me. He's willing to help me and he's available to help me. Number one, believe God is for you. Number two, I want to tell you that you need to believe that God is in control. I know life seems out of control. I've been there where, where everything is spinning out of control. You don't even know what's going to happen the next day. You don't even know what's going to happen tonight, right? Like, have you been there? I've been there where I'm just like, what's, what's going to happen, right? I remember there was this one point in my life where, where I was just like, will I, will I have a job by tonight? Have you been there? I've been there where I'm just like, what's going to happen with my job? What's going to happen with my finances? Like, will I even have a job tonight? Like, because life is crazy. I may not even be working tomorrow. What am I going to do financially to, to just be okay in life and move forward? I got to start coming up with some kind of plan. And as soon as you try to start a plan, it seems like something else spirals out of control. Right? And you're just like, my God, like, when is anything going to get on track? And it seems like life is spinning. Life is spinning. And, and I believe that there's some people watching today and life is spinning for you. Your marriage has spun out of control. Your job, your business has, spin, has spun out of control. Your kids are all over the place. And it seems like you don't have a grip or a hold on anything. Can I tell you, control is a mirage. Ultimately, we don't have control of anything. We really don't. We don't have control of tomorrow. There's only so much that we can do today. Tomorrow's not promised for anyone, the Bible says. We have no idea what tomorrow's going to do. But today I want to remind you, again, this is the second reminder of belief, that I need to believe that God is in control. He's in control. He's in control. I, I, need, to, I need to know and I need to trust that God, he holds me in the palm of his hands. God is in control. He's a powerful God. He's an awesome God. He's a mighty God. He's not going to let you go. He's not going to let your family go. And he's not going to let me go. And as long as we lean into him, trust him, worship him, put him at the center of everything. Believe me, God is in control. Come on. I love that. Just saying that gives me peace right now in this moment. He's in control. And maybe that's what you need to say to your soul right now. God, you're in control. No matter what happens, Maybe I don't get it on this side, but on, on the other side, you're in control. You're working out every single piece. You are in control. There's nothing out of your control. You're not in heaven, surprised. Like you're, you're not flipping out about this. This didn't catch you off guard. God, God knows what you're walking through. God knows what I'm walking through. And, and he's got us. He's got us. The God that got us through yesterday, the God that got us through five years ago, some, some people watching, that car accident should have killed you, right? Like that family situation looked like it was going to be the end of everything. Some of you, you, you didn't even think you were going to be here today. Like, right? Like some of us were, we know we're standing in grace. Like, I don't even know how I ended up where I am today. I don't deserve what I have. I can't believe I have this house, this home, this family. Like, I, I didn't even think I was going to make it here. But now that we're here, we start to doubt about the there. You didn't even think you were to make it here to begin with. But God somehow, some way, made a way. I love it. He's the way maker. And now that we're here, we're thinking, how am I going to make it there? How am I going to make it there? And the second reminder is that we need to know he's in control. I don't know how I'm going to make it there, but I know that he's God. And I know that he's good. And I know that he's in control. This dad has no idea what's happening with his son. This dad has no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. His son has almost been killed by this tormenting evil spirit. And Jesus' posture, reminder, and words come to tell him he's in control. He's in control. If I can, everything is possible for the one who believes. Do you believe today? 
I hope you do. And if you don't, I know he's willing to help you in your unbelief. He's helped me, but I've had unbelief. Number one, we need to remind our soul that God is for us. Number two, remind your soul, remind yourself, remind your family that he's in control. And I'll finish with this. Number three, the third reminder that we need to tell ourselves is that the bad can turn out for the good. Believe that the bad can turn out for the good. I know, I know that maybe what you're going through today is bad. I know that maybe what you're up against is, is tragic. I know there's people in our own community that have walked through dark days in the last week and the last two weeks. Um, we know that. We've walked through it. We've walked with people through those days. Life can be dark, hard, and sometimes it looks like it's really, really bad, and it is. But today, I just want to remind you that no matter what you may be up against, believe that even the bad can be turned for good. I know that makes no sense sometimes, and I know it's hard to hear sometimes, but here's what I know, that God is taking every single bad situation in my life and your life, and he turns it for the good. So the Bible tells us, he turns it for the good. Today, you're saying, how, how is he gonna turn my divorce into good? How is he going to take this sickness that I have for the good? How is he gonna take this family situation that I'm in for the good? How is he gonna take me getting fired for the good? I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know, but I know God is good. And I know God is for you. And I know that he's in absolute control. And when we know those things, we know that he does turn all things for the good of those who love him. That's what the Bible says. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 is absolutely beautiful. Come on, he's going to turn it for your good and for my good. And so maybe today you're under the storm. Maybe today you you find yourself like, like this father. You're, you've lost control. You, you're going crazy. You're anxious. You're stressed in your soul. Hey, have a belief. Have a belief that he's for you. Have a belief that he's in control. And have a belief that he turns the bad into good. He's going to turn it into good. It's a beautiful story where God just, he moves in his midst and Jesus heals this boy and it becomes a glorious story. And all I know is that God has a glorious story for you. I know, I know we're under a storm, maybe outside. And I know it looks ugly out there, but I know somehow, some way, he's a God who turns all things for the good. I've shared this story many times, but, but I went through a storm several years ago when I lost a family member and it was one of my aunts that I knew the most and I was closest to even though she was away I only have one aunt that I'm close to here locally but this was the only other aunt that I knew and that I was close to and, and she was diagnosed with cancer and, and that threw me into a whirlwind like I couldn't believe it I thought she was the most uh, just peaceful uh, lady beautiful woman in the world she loved Jesus and I didn't understand that and it threw me into disbelief, unbelief, doubt, fear. And we prayed for healing. And um, we didn't see healing on this side of eternity. And uh, that made me go into a season of darkness. And God, where are you? And God, I don't understand this. And little by little, God used the bad for good. It drew me closer to him. My questions, my doubts, my fears didn't scare God. It didn't make God move me away. But but I noticed that it drew me closer to God and God drew closer to me. In my dark days, he drew closer to me. In my questions, in my doubts, and my fears, he drew closer to me. And I finally realized that she wasn't healed on this side, but she was totally healed on the other side. And I realized that the enemy, what he wanted to do was to stop my speech. And he wanted to rob me of my praise. And he wanted to rob me of my worship. And I finally realized that God is good. I finally realized that he's for me, that he was in control, and that he turns the bad into good. And I'm praying for that for you today. And so I don't know where you're at. Maybe you're with family and friends today. And I want to take a moment to pray. I want to take a moment to pray. I want you to gather with your family, with your friends. And maybe right now you're in a tough moment, a dark day. Maybe the storm is not outside really physically on you, but internally there's a storm in your family. There's a storm in your marriage, in your workplace, in your business, with your, with your kids. Why don't you gather your family? Just pray together. I would love to pray for you. Me and Diana love you. We're here for you. We're here to help in any way that we can. 
we're here to help. And I think the first and most important thing is prayer. And so let's pray together. If you're, if you're watching and you don't know Jesus and somebody invited you to watch this and you're saying, I, Alex, I don't know who God is. Uh, I don't know who Jesus is. In fact, maybe you feel far from God. Maybe you're watching this right now. And you say, Alex, I, I don't even know if God wants me. Like I, I, I've done some things I'm not proud of. I want to tell you, Jesus loves you. God loves you so much. The Bible says all of us are sinners. Like there's not one person watching today that hasn't messed up. We've all messed up. None of us are perfect. Like every single one of us have failed. We've done wrong. We've, we've thought wrong. We've said wrong. We're all sinners. And the Bible says that sin separates us from God. But God is so good that he sent his son, Jesus. Jesus came to die for me. And he came to die for you. The Bible says that the sins of the world were placed on Jesus. My sin, my shame, my embarrassment, my, my mistakes were put on Jesus. Your sins, your shame was put on Jesus. You don't have to keep walking like that. You don't have to keep walking around with guilt and shame or with your head down. Jesus carried that for us. Every single one of our sins. The Bible says he went up to this cross on a place called Calvary. And he gave up his life for me and for you. The Bible says that, that the penalty of sin is death. And me and you, we deserve death. But Jesus says, I'll pay that price for you. Jesus died on the cross. He went down to a grave. He was in a grave for three days. And it looked like sin and death had won, but on the third day, Jesus, he overcame all of it and he resurrected from the dead. He's alive today. He loves you. Jesus is alive. And today he wants to come into your life, forgive you of all of your sins the way he did to me and so many of our friends and family. He wants to do that for you today. If you're watching today and you don't know Jesus, I would love to give you an opportunity to come into a relationship with God. The Bible says in the book of Romans that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. And so if you're watching online, you're saying, Alex, I need a relationship with God. I need forgiveness for my sins. I want you to, I want you to say this prayer with me. I'm going to pray for you. And I want you to repeat this prayer with me. And, and I believe that today you're starting a conversation with God and you're starting a relationship with God. You're saying, I'm putting my faith and trust in him. I need a brand new life. I need a brand new beginning. I need forgiveness for my sins. Say this prayer with me. I want you to say, Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this opportunity. Today I admit that I'm a sinner and that my sin separates me from you. Say, Jesus, come into my life. I believe you're the son of God, that you died for my sins, and on the third day, you resurrected. Be my Lord and be my savior. From today on, I am saved, I'm forgiven, and I'm healed. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hey, really quick, want to pray as well for anybody that may be going through a storm. Gather with your friends, with your family. If you're going through a storm uh, mentally, emotionally, physically, or uh, just uh, in your soul, let's pray. Father, I pray right now for anybody watching that uh, they're going through a storm emotionally, in their mind, in their soul, in their heart. Uh, maybe it's a sickness as well, physically. God, I pray for healing and I pray for peace right now in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will be with them right now. I pray that they would sense a blanket of your grace over their home, over their families, over their relationships, over their lives, God, that they would sense that you're a God who's for them, you're a God who's in control, and that you're a God who turns the bad into good. I pray that faith will rise. I pray that they would trust you, to know you, to lean into you, to lean into your word, God, that they would sense your Holy Spirit. I pray for a breath of fresh air in their lives, in their homes right now, God, over each and every single situation, God. I pray for peace. I know it seems like the storm is surging in their soul. It seems like the, the winds have picked up in their heart, in their mind. The rain is heavy, God, but you're the God who speaks to the storms. You calm down the winds. They have to listen to you. And I pray that they would sense your voice right now, speaking to the waves of their soul. God, that uh, peace would come in now, that you are speaking peace to their soul, to their marriage, to their life, to their relationships, to each and every single situation, God, that they would sense you now. God, I pray for friends and family right now. I pray for conversations to begin about your goodness, about your grace, about how you're going to work it all out, that they would talk amongst one another, God, that we would be the church and help out one another, God. And so I'm praying for each of our families and friends right now watching this, God, 
that they would know that you're the God of peace and that you're in control. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Awesome. Hey, we love you. Me and Dan are, are praying for you. We're praying that you stay safe through this storm. If you need anything, I know a lot of you, you're in connect groups, and that's how we find out and we can help out one another. Be praying for us. Uh, we're going to keep you updated how we're helping out our community, how we're helping out South Florida. We're going to be ready to serve and ready to help. Continue to pray for us. And again, if you uh, want to contribute and help us to stay strong financially as, as a church so that we can help, uh, the link is there so you can give. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for being generous. It helps us stay strong. It helps us to stay healthy. And so we appreciate your contributions as all of us give so that we continue to be a force across South Florida. We love you. We're looking forward to church on Sunday, September 8th. Come on, we're excited about that. We're going to be now at three locations. It's crazy. We're going to be at Kendall, at City Campus, and in our brand new West Campus. So Sunday morning, come join us across three locations. It's going to be awesome. It's on. It's a launch day for West Campus. And so we'll be at Kendall at 9, 11, 1, and 6. Our city campus will be at 11. And West Campus, we will be meeting there at 10 a.m. We can't wait to gather with all of you. We'll keep you updated throughout the week as well. Stay safe. We love you. And we're praying for you. See you soon.